Well, as today marks one year since Russia first invaded Ukraine, to get perspective, I had a chance to speak with retired Sergeant Alex Drukey of Tuscaloosa. The veteran of two tours in Iraq and fellow veteran Andy Wynn of North Alabama were both in Ukraine to help when they were captured by Russian forces. They were held in captivity for over 100 days until being released in a prisoner swap. Here's part of our conversation, starting with the question, how are they doing? We take things one day at a time. There's still some things to work on, but um, you know we've been getting medically checked out and everything's more or less okay there. Uh, we're, we're handling our, our uh, mental issues as well. We're, we're both getting care from the VA. And so, uh, you know, overall things are going well. As we do uh, mark one year since Russia invaded and uh, this war is continuing and Russia apparently is uh, planning some sort of offensive here coming up this spring. W what are your thoughts now? Um, that's that's something I've really been trying to process. I think, um, you, you know, no one really thought it was going to last this long. Russia thought it was going to take three days and then uh, then we'd all be fighting in Poland. Their fierce determination and their brave spirit has kept their, their country more or less intact for, for, you know, almost a full year. That's um, quite a feat since Russia was rated the second best and largest army in the world going into this. Um, this was clearly an act of Russian aggression. And I can tell you firsthand, um, the Russians are guilty of pretty much every single war crime and human rights violation that exists. Um, they are doing horrible things to the Ukrainian soldiers, to foreign volunteers like myself, um, to the Ukrainian citizens, uh, and, and just to the country itself. All the Ukrainians I met are just excellent people. You know, I, I commend them on their bravery, their determination, their fierceness, but they're also incredibly kind and very generous and and where they were so accepting of us clearly putin underestimated the resolve by the ukrainian people um and it, we just had a report in fact early this week of how many russian citizens who would have been you know drafted into this this war have tried to leave that country right. seeking asylum here in the u.s um going forward i mean we didn't look as we know, Putin's unpredictable. We don't know what he's going to do. We don't know how much he's just threatening and posturing and how much he's willing to do. I, can you get a read on it? Where Where do you think this is going? I I really think that it, at this point, the only reason that the war is still ongoing is because Putin can't uh, admit to the fact that, that he's lost, that this was a, a terrible military blunder. And it shouldn't be going on anymore. At this point, he's just throwing out untrained bodies for them to be killed. But he is very unpredictable. And I feel like he's he's backed himself into a corner, but he's not going to stop. What was the worst for you, uh, if you can share that? I mean, there were, there were countless times that I, I really thought I had less than a second to live. Um, the, the two worst things that they did were um, at, at the black site, uh, which is a, a site we can't identify, um, and it was where most of our torture happened. Um, they, they hooked us up to basically a car battery. Um, they electrocuted Andy about, I think, two or three times, and they electrocuted me four times. Um, and that was, that was pretty rough, the ride for our release. And honestly, that, that was the worst ordeal of, of the entire thing. It wasn't just we got picked up at the prison and we took a 30-minute ride to get to the airport and got on a plane. No, it was, it was about 24 hours of, of absolute pure hell. Um, they, they had um, taped our hands with uh, packing tape and put plastic bags over our heads and tightly wrapped uh, packing tape around our eyes. And then they tossed us in the back of a military vehicle and, and kind of locked us together in stress positions. We're, we're, we're sitting on top of each other. Um, nobody can breathe. Um, it, was, it was bad. What message do you want to send to anybody listening to this right now? You know, I know we've We've got some of our newly elected representatives that are saying, hey, we, we don't want to support Ukraine at all. We want to pull money back here. And I understand that. But if we don't stop Putin here, he's not going to be satisfied. If he takes Ukraine, he'll wait a little bit and then he'll go for Poland or Finland or you know, he'll go for other countries. He's not going to be satisfied. But this is a just cause. Um, on top of that, I, I recommend that you, you know, if you can, the easiest thing for you to do is, is to donate funds. And the, uh, the main fund that I would recommend is called United 24. Um, they are incredibly transparent to the dollar on the website. They're showing where it's being spent. And uh, the thing I like best about it is you have an option for how you want your, your donations to be spent. You can say, hey, I want it to go to uh, humanitarian aid or I want it to go to the rebuilding. And uh, they have pledged that wherever you say you want your money to go, that's where it will go. 
So I, I would strongly recommend, um, if you can, please donate, and if not, contact your representatives. And then that full conversation will drop later today on my podcast.